Well, thank you guys for joining us. We um, switch up in the schedule. We're going before Dr. Sachs, so sorry, but it's us now. Um, I'm Kate Shepard. I'm an enterprise editor at the Huffington Post. Um, in a previous life, I mostly covered energy and environment. I still cover it a little bit, but mostly I just sit at a desk all day. I'm pleased to be up on stage talking with uh, Dr. Adam Sobel, who is an atmospheric scientist who specializes in the dynamics of climate and weather. He leads the Columbia University Initiative on Extreme Weather and Climate. And Dr. Peter Kellerman, who's a professor and chair of the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Columbia. His primary research focus is on geologic capture and storage of carbon dioxide. Well, let's kick it off. Um, Adam, your focus is on extreme weather and climate, which I think is a relatively easy way for people to understand the impacts of climate change, but is also one of those things that people always feel that they have to caveat. Climate and weather aren't the same. You know, we can't say that this exact event was caused by climate change. What do you want people to know about the relationship between climate and extreme weather? Uh, it's difficult to give really simple answers that are um, scientifically precise at the same time. There, with some kinds of extreme events, we can already see uh, fairly clearly the impacts of climate change. I think heat waves are the clearest example where we've seen some in recent years that are outside the envelope of, of natural variability and of the type that are um, understanding of both the observations and our, our simulations of the present and past and future climate suggest we should be seeing. With other kinds of extreme events, um, on the other extreme, some events like tornadoes, we really don't have any evidence linking them to climate change and then the others fall in some spectrum in between with some very heavy rain events like the Louisiana floods of last year. There's some pretty compelling evidence that there's some role for climate change in those and then others like hurricanes, it's still fairly contentious about whether we can see the effects uh, yet or whether it, that's just something we should expect for the future. And of course, with other kinds of extreme events like cold events, we expect them to become less severe as, as time goes on. So, I mean, the, the science of attributing individual extreme events to climate change is rapidly evolving. It's something that we used to say we couldn't do. We don't say that anymore. We can do it sometimes in a probabilistic and uh, in incomplete way. Um, so there isn't, you know, there isn't a simple sound bite there. I, and I think, but I think the important thing is that um, climate change is, is uh, here now. There are some impacts we can see now. There are others that we expect just for the future. Uh, even if they're not at event now. But the big picture is what's most important. And I think when we focus on individual events too much, it, it can be a distraction from that big picture where we have a, a comprehensive body of evidence suggesting the direction the planet is going. And um, so even though we, we do try to study individual events and understand their relation to climate change, it's important not to get too caught up in that because it's in some sense the leading edge of the science where the uncertainties are the greatest and it's there's so much that we do know with, with greater certainty that it's better to focus on the, on the big picture. And a related question is just how that motivates public understanding. I mean, after Superstorm Sandy, there was a lot of discussion that like, maybe this is the event that really gets people to see that you know, climate does impact US civilization in a major way, even not, not necessarily the storm itself, but looking at like, the surge and vulnerable infrastructure. And I felt like there was a bump afterwards where people really cared about it and thought about it a lot. And then I don't know that it, that continued after. Yeah, there are a few different issues there. Sandy was uh, an interesting example. There isn't strong evidence that the storm itself, Sandy, had a significant anthropogenic influence, human influence. Um, the, the flood was about eight inches worse due to sea level rise related to climate change. Um, so, and that's a significant but small fraction of the total flooding. I think though that, um, so some people, including the governor of New York State, immediately went out and said, this is, a, you know, this is a huge climate change disaster. The scientific evidence really wasn't there to say that for the storm itself. Um, but I don't think um, it's completely wrong to see some link there in the sense that events like Sandy show the vulnerability that we have, even to the present climate. And, in as much as we do expect some kinds of events to become more frequent or more intense, um, then we're not wrong in seeing these events of some of these events as harbingers of, of what's coming, even if the links in the present aren't um, aren't there yet. 
So um, it did elevate the debate um, for a little while, even if you know all this, some of the debate wasn't as fully informed by the science as it could have been. And I think the, the, the deeper question you asked is about the interest fading over time. This is what we see with disasters. There's a short period where it really focuses people's attention, whether it's on climate change or just overall on very, uh, the vulnerability. I mean, a lot of the things New York is doing now to protect itself from future events probably were worth doing, even if there were no climate change. But that, that fades rather quickly, and um, I think one of the connections between weather disasters and climate change is independent of the scientific link between them, but is about the human perception. I mean, the climate change is an event that people see as far off in the future. It's sort of happening slowly all the time, and, and it's hard to focus attention and interest on that. And we see how that works with extreme weather events. When there's something right in front of our faces, we pay attention for a while, but then we get distracted by other things. And, and that the difficulty, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why um, attribution studies try to link them, because these extreme events are sort of teachable moments when it, it, it forces us to think about the environment we live in and some of the risks that it carries, and that's a good time to be talking about climate change, regardless of what the specific links are. So it, it, um, I don't have an answer, but it is a, it is a challenging thing to sustain, sustain interest.